May the Force be with you. Two Jedi. Finally, a challenge. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Star Wars The Clone Wars episodes. Looks like we got ourselves a batch of shinies, Commander. Shinies, sir? That's right. Your armor. It's shiny and new. Just like you. For this list, we're looking at episodes from the 2008 CGI television series, not to be confused with the 2003 animated TV miniseries, as that is a similar but completely different show altogether. Number 10, To Catch a Jedi. That's her, the rogue Jedi. Named after the 1955 Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece To Catch a Thief, this episode follows Anakin's Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, on the run from the Jedi and the Republic for a crime she did not commit. After further investigation, there can be little doubt that the clone officers murdered in the escape were killed by none other than Ahsoka Tano herself. Working together to clear both their names, Ahsoka teams up with Asajj Ventress, a series villain turned bounty hunter. They'll have us both in prison before you said your name. I don't have to hand you over to the Jedi. I can hand you over to the Bonesman and still get paid. The tone of this episode is notably different from the rest of the series. It's gritty, claustrophobic, and works as much as a crime drama as it does a Clone Wars episode, and an exceptional one at that. We are not going to hurt any of you, but you're not taking me in. Commander, we are taking you in. Number nine, Darkness on Umbara. Time to lock and load! Focusing on the clone troopers and their tense relationship with the Jedi Masters, this episode introduces fans to Jedi General Pong Krell, who isn't quite as kind to his clone troopers as Anakin or Obi-Wan. Your reputation precedes you, General. It is an honor to be serving you. I find it very interesting, Captain, that you are able to recognize the value of father for a clone. The best part of this series is the willingness to tell us stories we don't get to see in the films giving us the perspective of a group of clones and their experience fighting a war they were created to fight is a refreshing take on an amazing concept that gets brushed over in the prequels. Nobody move. Number 8, Monster. What a fine looking specimen. Introducing Savage Oppress, this Sith in training also happens to be the brother of Darth Maul, with Asajj Ventress now working against Count Dooku. She seeks the help of the Knight Sisters and Mother Talzin. You will select the most suitable candidate. One with your strength and skill. Talzin offers Asajj a number of possible allies to assist her in taking down Dooku, which leads to a series of tests to find a worthy apprentice. There are only two of us left, brother. But only one will survive. No, not if I can help it. The winner, of course, is Savage, who is then placed undercover at Dooku's side as his new apprentice. This episode is crucial to setting up the eventual return of Darth Maul to the Star Wars saga. Brother. Number 8, Witches of the Mist. With Savage training with Dooku in the ways of the Sith, Obi-Wan and Anakin are sent by the Jedi Order to find out more about this mysterious new Force-sensitive warrior. This episode demonstrates Savage's power, as he is able to take on both Anakin and Obi-Wan in battle. Savage then turns on Ventress and Doku after they both underestimate his power. Weakened from battle, Savage returns to Mother Talzin, who sends him off to find his brother in the Outer Rim. Savage proves that he's more than just Darth Maul's brother, but a capable warrior who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful beings in the galaxy. Number six, rookies. Attention, sergeant on deck. At ease. Even though you're all new here, I shouldn't have to remind you that this quadrant is key to the Outer Rim. An early indication of the show's ability to expand the Star Wars universe in unexpected ways. This episode features rookie clone troopers facing impossible odds in their first real mission. That should slow those fuckers down. This way, hurry! the first time the series shows the clones as more than just killing machines, depicting them as individuals that the audience can care about. Where's your sergeant? Dead, sir. We're all that's left. Only two rookies escape the episode with their lives, Fives and Echo, who would go on to become recurring characters throughout the run of the series. I got one! Sorry, Echo, I junked that one. Fuck how you did. 
Number five, the Ghosts of Mortis. This place is strong with the Force. Darkness has no hold here. Go. Ask, and you will know what to do. The final installment of the Mortis arc shows Anakin having visions of his future, foreshadowing several key elements in Revenge of the Sith and his eventual turn to the dark side as Darth Vader. You will not understand what I have to do to end the Clone War. You will try to stop me. <laughs> Anakin's memory of those visions, however, is later erased. The Ghosts of Mortis also features information about the Force previously unknown to even the most diehard of Star Wars fans. What if I could show you the future? The Mortis Trilogy stands as some of the best episodes the show had to offer, and its conclusion is no exception. Number four, Revenge. It is you. You may have forgotten me, but I will never forget you. When Darth Maul made his first appearance in the Clone Wars, he was a monster-like creature with spider legs. Not exactly the Maul that fans had gotten to know in The Phantom Menace. <laughs> However, Revenge sees Mother Talzin restoring Maul's sanity and giving him regular robotic legs to replace his spider body. Revenge features a few pivotal moments in the series, including Asajj Ventress teaming up with Obi-Wan to take on Maul and his brother Savage, and the long-awaited rematch between Maul and Obi-Wan. Your death will be beyond excruciating. You will suffer as I have suffered. Number three, the wrong Jedi. Henceforth, you are barred from the Jedi Order. In what was long considered the series finale before the Netflix produced Lost Missions, we see the end of the arc that featured Ahsoka on the run. It also explains why Ahsoka doesn't appear or is even mentioned in Revenge of the Sith. When I heard your little rat was on the run, I thought she might bring a large bounty. Like the rest of the arc, this episode was named after Alfred Hitchcock's The Wrong Man. The episode ends on a sad note, with Ahsoka refusing to return to the Jedi Order. This moment marks a high note for both the series and for Ahsoka's character. I'm sorry, Master, but I'm not coming back. Number two, The Lawless. Obi-Wan, I need your help. One of, if not the most heartbreaking and action-packed episodes this series has to offer. Darth Maul, along with his brother, have taken over the planet Mandalore. With Duchess Satine held prisoner by the brothers, Obi-Wan goes undercover to rescue the woman he loves, unknowingly falling into a trap. We meet again, Kenobi. Welcome to my world. Along with a devastating moment that makes Obi-Wan even more of a sympathetic character, this episode also includes one of the most badass lightsaber duels of the series, pitting Savage and Maul up against Darth Sidious, who sees Maul's rise to power as a threat against him. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. of the universe. Moralo e Val is impressed. No casualties are the first chapters. I guarantee you that will not be the case in the next. Kill them! Kill them! I want their skins! Number one, The Sacrifice. We are the Sith. Afraid of you. I am not. We shall see. In the series finale, Yoda visits the Sith home of Moraband, giving fans their first look at the birthplace of the most evil force in the galaxy. Do you know who I am? Yes, Darth Bane, the ancient Sith Lord you are. Yoda must face a number of tests in order to discover the truth about the Sith. This episode also features the voice of Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, lending his acting talents in this return to the Star Wars franchise as Darth Bane, the legendary Sith Lord. You must free me! Nothing to show me, the Sith have. We shall see. Anyway, who doesn't want to see more of Yoda in action? A fitting end to an awesome series. <laughs> Oh, 
Do you agree with our list? Of course, sir. What's your favorite episode of The Clone Wars? For more exciting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Before it is too late. <sighs> yes, Master.